and ten also. Okay. Okay. So bulk modulus question again. Leave out some words. Okay. It's based on elasticity. So we'll do this in the next chapter. Okay, this tenth question you can leave out because it's based on pressure. But uh, just use the formula that pressure at the bottom due to the liquid is density into G into H. Okay, so coefficient of linear expansion of the metal is given as this much. And coefficient of volume expansion of benzene is given okay. So if the contents of the vessel is now heated by ten degrees C, what happens due to the pressure? Okay. So what happens is that the volume of benzene becomes the original volume, let's say. Multiplied by one plus ten days per minus three into ten. Okay, whereas the cross-sectional area of the vessel becomes the original area into one plus beta for the metal. So that is two into ten days per minus three into ten. Okay, so the height. Becomes the new volume divided by the new area, which is V naught by A naught, one plus ten days per minus two, divided by one plus two into ten days per minus two. Okay, so we can see that the height changes by factor of. Now we'll do the approximation thing here. So bring this to the numerator. Okay, so that factor can be written as one plus point zero one minus point zero two. So it's approximately minus point zero one. So it should decrease by a factor of point uh, by a factor of one percent or point zero one. Is it clear? Basically, you have to find by what factor the height of benzene decreases. So the height decreases. Wait, wait. Height decreases by this much. Now we have to find out what the pressure changes by. So that's the product of density and height. So as far as the pressure is concerned, we have to also look at density of benzene. How it changes. The height decreases by one percent. It becomes. What about density? So density will also decrease by a factor of gamma delta t. So that is going to be one percent. Okay. So density decreases by one percent and height decreases by one percent. So the product will decrease by two percent. So overall, the density should decrease by two percent. Okay, so hope this concept is clear now. Okay, uh, let's also discuss question number thirteen.
<clears throat> okay so in question 13 we want to prepare this tkl such that the maximum error for a 1 mm interval is so much okay so delta l by l should be less than equal to 6 into 10 raised to minus 5 what no So alpha delta t should be less than equal to six into. Okay. So delta t should be less than equal to this divided by alpha, which is given to us as twelve into ten raised to minus six. So five degrees. The maximum variation in temperature allowed for us is five degrees. Okay, good. I'm okay. Right. Let's move on to question seventeen, then twenty six, twenty seven. That's the seventeen we've already done. So let's come to twenty six and twenty seven. हाँ सर वीक बेस और एसिड्स के लिए करने वाले थे पीएच ठीक है हमने जो लास्ट टाइम किया उसमें कहीं किसी को कोई प्रॉब्लम है क्या कंसेंट्रेशन ओके Thermally insulated vessel contains some water at zero degree C. The vessel is connected to a vacuum pump to pump out water vapor. This results in some water getting frozen. Sir, एक मिनट. हाँ, it is given that latent heat of <coughs> vaporization of water at zero degree C is this much. Okay. so basically see what is happening is that if we are pumping out some water vapor then some of the water is converting into vapor <clears throat> and in the process what is happening it is absorbing heat okay so let's say let's say the total mass of water initially is m so out of that x converts to vapor okay and y converts to ice M minus x plus y remains as water. So, when we have converted the maximum percentage of water into ice, the remaining percentage of water should become zero. Basically, all of the water should. we converted between vapor and okay so for maximum percentage conversion y should become equal to m minus x like this okay so you can see that the heat that is absorbed by the x amount of water which is forming steam or forming vapor rather is x multiplied with latent heat of vapor that should be equal to m minus x okay that is the heat given off by m minus x amount of water which is freezing so that is the latent heat of freezing okay so from this we can get x by m ratio and from that we can get the percentage conversion is the concept clear kevin Okay, I'll check out question twenty and twenty-five also, but 
Okay, so this one is okay. Let's go back to question twenty. The temperature of equal masses of three liquids A, B, and C is this much, this much, and this much. Okay. Yeah, question twenty is complete. I think Snikita. Okay. Because it's asking just what it can be. If it asks exactly what the temperature will be, then uh, the question would be incomplete because we don't have enough data. Okay. But it's just asking that can be which of these? That means this can be done by elimination. Okay, sir. So it should be possible to do this by elimination. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's come to question twenty-five also. Given that weight of a person is sixty kg, if he gets hundred kilocalories of heat through food. and the efficiency of his body is 28% then okay so basically efficiency is 28% means efficiency of conversion of heat from food into mechanical energy that is what we have to assume in the question that this efficiency is for conversion to mechanical energy the amount of mechanical energy you can generate from this is the 28% of this so 28 Kilo calories. Twenty eight into ten raised power three into four point one eight joules of mechanical energy. Okay, so from that you just find out equate this with mgh. So that is the maximum height you can climb, and it's given to take g as ten. Okay, so hope this is clear. We need yes. Okay, good. Uh, then let's come back to question twenty-seven. Okay. So I said zero degree C is added to two hundred grams of water initially at seventy degree C in a vacuum flask. When fifty grams of ice has been added and has all melted, the temperature of the flask and its contents is forty degree C. When a further eighty grams. Okay. So what we'll see here is that when you Check this data out now. That 50 grams of what uh, ice at zero degree C was added, and the final temperature of ice is 40 degree C. So you can see that the heat absorbed by the ice, which is 50 into latent heat of ice, Plus fifty into specific heat capacity of water into forty, whereas the heat absorbed by the water 
will be equal to 200 grams into specific heat capacity of water into the temperature difference. Okay. So you will see that this data equated with this does not match with the second part of the question that went further 80 grams. So that means the vacuum flask itself is also having some heat capacity. So this also has some heat capacity. Let's say C. So what is happening is that the vacuum flask is initially at 70. So the flask also absorbs some heat. So that is C into this temperature difference, 70 minus 40, sorry. Okay. So for the, for the first piece of data, this is what we'll equate, that the heat absorbed by the ice is equal to the heat given by the water plus the heat given by the flask. Okay. So 50L plus now equate this with 1. So 50 into 40 is equal to 200 into 30 plus some unknown heat capacity into 30. So there are two unknowns in this equation, L and C. So C is also unknown, L is also unknown. Okay. And now when a further 80 grams of ice has been added and has all melted, the temperature of the hole is 10 degrees C. So now just change this from 50 to uh, 130. So 130 L plus 130 into, now the temperature is finally 10. Okay. That should be equal to 200 into, now this temperature difference will become 60. Okay. Plus that unknown heat capacity into 60. So this is my second equation. So equate this, I mean, solve this equation and this equation together and you will get the unknown quantity L as well as the unknown quantity C. And you will get it in calories per gram degree C. So you have to convert it to joules. Per... I mean, you will get it in calories per gram. So convert it to joule per kg. So basically, there was a hidden meaning in the question that why two informations were given? Because there is an un another unknown involved. And it doesn't say that ignore the heat capacity of the vacuum flask. So you have to make that guesswork that we cannot ignore it. Okay. And take into account some kind of heat capacity of the flask. Okay. So this completes this part. Let's come to the kinetic theory of gases part. So question 30, 37, 34. Okay, let's start with these. So let's look at question 30. According to KTG, the speed of molecules decreases after each collision. The pressure exerted by a diatomic gas is proportional to the mean velocity of the molecule. Kinetic energy of the gas decreases on expansion at constant temperature. You know, the mean translational kinetic energy increases with an increase in absolute temperature. Okay. So this is not true because the collisions are perfectly elastic. Okay. So as you know, in perfectly elastic collisions, between identical objects, speed can both increase or decrease for a given molecule. No? It depends on the other molecule it is colliding with. And it depends on what type of collision it is, whether it is head-on or oblique, etc. So speed can decrease, but speed can increase also. For example, if there's a head-on elastic collision between two identical molecules, I mean, obviously they have identical mass, there is exchange of momentum. No? So whichever one was at lower speed, its speed will increase. Whichever one is at higher speed, its speed will decrease. Okay, so that is a wrong statement. This is obviously dimensionally wrong only. Oh, sorry, it's saying proportionate to. 
so pressure is never proportional to pressure is we pro, pressure is proportional to square root of proportional to v okay so it's not proportional to mean speed okay this is wrong because kinetic energy of the gas is proportional to the temperature okay so mean translational kinetic energy of atomic gas will increase in absolute temperature this is okay because mean kinetic energy is proportional to temperature you know because v rms square is proportional to temperature mean speed is also proportional to square root of temperature so so hope this is clear Okay, let's come to uh, question thirty-seven then. Okay, thirty-one also. Okay, see, this is about interpretation. Okay, what is happening? It is a metallic cylinder. and you are slowly pushing the piston so the metal is heat conducting so this will result in what kind of process it will result in isothermal compression okay so isothermal compression means what is happening the pressure versus volume graph is going like this in this direction so the pressure of the gas increases okay the volume decreases so obviously number of molecules per unit volume increases average speed does not change because temperature is remaining constant okay pressure increases so the frequency of collisions also increases so the wrong statement is c molecules per unit volume baba not number of molecules is increasing per unit volume volume decrease kiya na you compressing the gas na yes sir got it okay okay let's come to thirty nine forty okay thirty seven thirty nine forty we'll come to these average kinetic energy per molecule of a monoatomic gas at 0 degree c okay. 
this is Boltzmann constant given to us. Okay, so that is uh, for a for any gas actually, but for monoatomic gas, this is the average kinetic energy. So we have to just equate this now. So three by two into one point three eight into 10 days per minus 23 into 273 Kelvin. This quantity we have to calculate. That's 37th question. Let's come to 39th. So RMS speed of oxygen molecule in a gas is V. If the temperature is doubled and the oxygen molecules dissociate into oxygen atoms, the RMS speed will become how much? So this quantity is three by two kT. Okay. So that means V RMS is proportionate to square root of temperature divided by molecular mass. So now what we are doing in the second case. The second case M2 is becoming half of M1 because they are dissociating and T2 is becoming double of T1. Okay. Understood, no? so it should become two times. Okay, so hope this question is also clear. Now let's come to 40th question. Ideal gas follows the process pressure into temperature is constant. The correct graph between pressure and volume will be what? Okay, so pressure into temperature is constant means pressure into temperature can be written as PV upon NR is constant. So P square V is constant. So P is proportional to one by root P. So that should be some kind of graph like this. Yes, Prachi, uh, Young's modulus and stress and strain will not be there in this test because you have not learned that in the chapter of properties of matter yet. Okay. So that we will discuss in properties of matter chapter. So only when we discuss that, that will be relevant from test point of view. Okay, so now these questions are done. Next, we have question 60, 61. Also 58, 57, okay. There's also 41 and 42, okay. Okay, so let's look at question 41 and 42. So, two grams of a gas are introduced into an evacuated flask kept at 25 degrees C. The pressure is found to be one atmosphere. Okay. So, basically, what is happening? This two grams of some gas are, let's say, N1 moles. Okay. And the flask 
has a volume of let's say v so p1v is equal to n1r into this temperature which is Two ninety-eight Kelvin, and this pressure is one atmosphere. Okay. So that's this thing. Okay, so N one is equal to two grams divided by molar mass of their first gas. Now, when three grams of another gas is Added. So let's say these three grams of another gas is some N two. The pressure becomes one point five. So P two into V becomes N one plus N two into R into. Now it's saying that the temperature is kept at this value. So we'll assume that the temperature is at the same value for the second one. Okay. So now we can see that this is one point five. so now you can see by taking ratio of the two equations you have 1 divided by 1.5 is equal to n1 divided by n1 plus n2 okay and you express n1 and n2 in terms of mass divided by molar mass so you will get the ratio of the molar mass or molecular weights so question is clear nas nikita yes sir let's come to question 42 So at a temperature capital T, n molecules of gas A each having mass small m, and at the same temperature two n molecules of gas B having mass two m are filled in a container. The mean square velocity of molecules of gas B is b square. so mean square velocity basically means this this okay so if i actually take square root of mean square velocity that gives me rms so mean square basically you can also say is v rms square okay okay So let's understand this. You are keeping them at a common temperature T, na? Okay. So V R M S square for gas E will be equal to three R T divided by, or you can say three K T divided by small m. Whereas V R M S square for B will be three K T divided by two M. Okay, and you have V X square is equal to one third of V R M S square. So if you just use these principles, you will be able to come up with whatever is required. Okay, sir. So equate this quantity here, the second one, this one, as v square, and equate this one as three times v x square for a, no? and then compare this quantity and this quantity. You will get the answer. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, so next in this we have to move to question forty-seven. Uh, okay, forty-six also okay. Let's discuss forty-six then first. A mixture of oxygen and hydrogen kept at room temperature 
as compared to a hydrogen molecule and oxygen molecule hits the wall okay so we have to just compare the rms now so v rms for oxygen is square root of 3 rt divided by 32 grams and v rms for hydrogen is square root of 3 rt divided by 2 grams okay so the speed is comparable like this whereas the kinetic energy is uh, same no because they are both 5 by 2 kt they are both diatomic gases so whichever one has lower mass will have more speed okay so compared to a hydrogen molecule and oxygen molecule hits with smaller average speed but with equal kinetic energy okay so hope this one is clear samarth okay. yeah so now let's move on to question 47 so this statement is given to us that pv to the power 2 by 3 is constant and it's saying that the balloon is expanding that means the volume is increasing so we can convert this to a temperature and volume relation no? so pv to the power 2 by 3 is constant this implies that t by v into v to the power 2 by 3 is constant that means temperature is proportional to v to the power 1 by 3 okay so volume is expanding temperature will also increase is it clear okay Okay, let's move on to question fifty-one. Fifty and fifty-one. Okay, forty-nine also. All right. So let's see all these three questions. So perfect gas of given mass is heated first, and then in a small vessel, and then in a large vessel. Okay. So when you heat it in a small vessel, okay, such that the volume remains constant. So this is an isochoric process. So pressure is proportional to temperature. but pressure is proportional to temperature how it is nr by v times temperature so our pressure versus temperature graph will look like a straight line but the slope of the line is inversely proportional to the volume of the container okay so the one having so there will be straight lines different slopes the smaller vessel will have a larger slope so the slope of this line p is equal to m into t this slope is inversely proportional to volume So remember, they have not asked for PV graph; they have asked for PT graph you know, for a isochoric process. So it's a straight line. But if I compare two different processes, okay, for the same gas, so N is same, and going from the same pressure P1 to the same final pressure P2, 
but once it's kept in a container of lower volume and once it's kept in a container of higher volume so when it's kept in a container of lower volume the slope of this graph will be less okay let's move on to the next one 30 liters it contains gas okay so here you have to just use this relation that pressure into some fixed volume is equal to nr into some fixed temperature So now when certain amount of gas leaks, it becomes P minus delta P. That is N minus delta M into R into T naught. Okay. So from this, you can see that this delta P is given to us as 0.78. So we can approximate it like this, Pascals, okay. Volume of that is given to us as 30 liters. Okay. And temperature is given to us as 300 Kelvin. Oh, sorry, 273 Kelvin. So what we can do is, we can find the value of delta N, the number of moles which have leaked out. So delta N is equal to this delta P into V naught divided by R into T naught. And from that, we can solve the question. We know the number of moles which has leaked out and we know the density of the gas at STP. Okay, so we can just use the relation PM is equal to rho RT. Or Yeah, so from that we can only find out the mass of gas which is liquid. Okay, so hope this is clear. Okay, very good. Let's move on to question 51. Okay, so you have this open vessel of mercury and in that you have inserted an open and white glass tube. Like this, okay. Such that This length is 0 0.05 meters. Okay. And then what we do is we seal this open end now. So once you seal it, this air inside, it is at a pressure equal to atmospheric pressure, volume equal to 0 0.05 into whatever area of cross section and temperature equal to T naught. Okay. Now, when you raise it by a further 0.43 meters, what is going to happen is that as you raise it further up, okay, the pressure of the air inside will tend to decrease. So some mercury will go up. 
so now let's say this becomes x okay so the level of mercury is equal to now this total thing is becoming how much it is becoming 0 0.05 plus how much we've increased it by 0.43 so that is 0.48 so this will become 0.48 minus x okay so now the air that is there is it is at share p prime suppose okay but its volume has become x into a but its temperature is remaining t naught because it's glass okay so we have p prime into x should be equal to p naught into 0 0.05 so p prime is p naught into 0 0.05 divided by x and now this point's pressure here should be equal to the pressure at the open surface so pressure at a should be equal to pressure at b which is equal to atmospheric pressure so pressure at the point a will become the pressure of the air here plus density of mercury into g into this height 0.48 minus x and that should be equal to pressure of b which is atmospheric pressure So from this equation now you should be able to get x which is unknown quantity okay so when you write down this equation it will be like this that p naught to 0 0.05 divided by x plus density of mercury into g into 0 0.48 minus x this should be p naught okay and you can equate p naught with density of mercury into g into 76 centimeters and that way you can get x more easily so hope the method of solving this is clear okay Okay, so let's come to 56, 57 next. Okay, so in 56, what is happening is that we have this cylinder which is maintained at 300 Kelvin initially. It is divided into two parts of equal volume at equal pressure by a piston. So initially, The piston is at midpoint because both sides are having same pressure, same volume and same temperature. Now later what we are doing is we are increasing the temperature of one side by 100 degrees C, so it's becoming 400 Kelvin, while the other is maintained at uniform temperature. And okay, so the piston and the walls are perfect insulators. So let's say I'm increasing the temperature of this side to 400 Kelvin. This side remains 300 Kelvin. So the piston will move somewhere here, let's say. So this volume now becomes V1 this volume becomes V2, but the pressure becomes some P prime on both sides. Okay. So we had 
P into V. So V was let's say L, like this, and V one is L plus X. V two is L minus X into the area. So P into L into A was equal to. Now obviously same pressure, same volume, same temperature of the gas initially. So number of moles is same on both sides. Okay, and now what is happening? This is initially, and later what is happening? P prime into L plus X into A is equal to N R into four hundred, and that same pressure P prime into L minus X into A is equal to N R into three hundred. Okay, so we can see that L Plus x is to l minus x is four by three. So from that we can find out x. Okay. Okay. In terms of l, we can find out, and l we can find out like this that the volume is hundred cc on each part, and the area is this much now. So L is equal to hundred cc divided by ten point eight five centimeter square. So from this we can find out x, and if required we can find out the pressure also. So this is clear, na? Okay. So next, uh, I'll come back to fifty-three also. But since I'm on this page, let's do fifty-seven first. Okay. So twelve grams of gas occupy a volume of this much at a temperature of this much. Okay. After the gas is heated at constant pressure, its density becomes that much. so let's relate uh, density and temperature na so we have the equation pm is equal to rho rt so if pressure is kept constant for isobaric process what will happen density is inversely proportional to temperature or volume is directly proportional to temperature okay so initial density is 12 grams divided by 4 into 10 raised power minus 3 into 10 raised power 6 cc we can say okay at an initial temperature of 280 kelvin okay so now the new density is 6 into 10 raised power minus 4 the new temperature we have to find out so we just use this relation okay only the unit conversion was a critical thing here okay i think this should also be clear okay Let's come back to question fifty-three then. so this is actually um, this is not a question of heat and thermodynamics is just a question of hydrostatics actually so you can leave this out this is a question of hydrostatics not of heat and thermodynamics but anyway you will understand what's happening here is that 
you have the mercury level and inside i have dipped the inverted glass tube such that only 50 cm is outside okay so what we will see is that mercury is going to be right up to here such that at the top point if this point is e this point is b and this point is c and this height difference is h so we have pressure at b is equal to pressure at c which will be equal to atmospheric pressure so that will be pa plus rho gh is equal to atmospheric pressure so pressure at the point at the top will become p not minus rho gh so it will become rho g into 76 minus 50 this way we will just have to convert this to si unit so density of mercury should be substituted here in kg per meter cube which will be 13600 g has 9.8 meters per second square and the height difference 76 minus 50 should be in converted to meters so hope this is also clear okay yes shikhar so what you have to do here is na you have to apply the pressure difference formula to these two points a and b in this diagram inside this mercury is right up to the top of the inverted glass tube right so the pressure difference between these two points is given by this pressure at the point b will be equal to pressure at the point a e plus rho gh and pressure at the point b is equal to atmospheric pressure so from that we are getting this relation so anyway this is not a question of heat and thermodynamics only so at the moment you need not worry about this question okay so next we will come to question number 60 i guess yeah 60 61 all these questions have been asked Okay, so these are pressure versus density graphs. So if pressure versus density is a straight line, then what type of process is it? If pressure is proportional to density, that means pressure is inversely proportional to volume. Okay, so that is isothermal. Okay. and we have pm is equal to rho rt na so the p versus rho graph it uh, it will have a slope of rt by m okay so you can see that this one is having a smaller slope compared to this okay obviously is the same ideal gas so that means t1 is greater than t2 Okay. All right. Now let's move on to sixty-first question. This is very important. The stroke volume question. So I will just switch to my whiteboard for this one to explain what is happening in the case of 
this okay so this cylinder with a stroke piston basically means our arrangement is something like this that we have a piston now this piston has a one way valve in it somewhere so it has a valve such that in each stroke what we do is we push it up by a certain amount let's say x and during this time the valve remains closed okay and then we push it down back again and when we push it down so as it is going down the valve opens so this much gas leaks out okay so what happens is that initially suppose okay so after the first stroke let's say pressure becomes p1 volume remains v temperature remains t but also here the number of moles was n okay after the first stroke the number of moles becomes n1 which is n minus some delta n now it's telling us that if we go back to the question the data in the question given to us is that a piston pump with a stroke volume of small v so we have to find the pressure after n strokes okay so the stroke volume is small v so that means this is the volume of gas removed after one stroke or you can say after each stroke okay. so for example initially we had pv is equal to nrt or we can write this as pm is equal to rho rt okay now when we expanded this okay what would have happened is that this one would have increased to p1m okay. or so this is what is happening in the second picture so this is the equation of state in the second picture this is the equation of state in the first picture and then when the piston is coming back to this in the third picture the pressure remains the same but these many moles of gas are removed because that's when the piston open uh, the valve opens 
and lets out delta n moles of gas. So here to here the valve is closed. And then here to here the valve opens, letting out that much gas. Okay, so this volume of gas basically, I mean this part of the volume of the container, that's my small v. So small v is basically x into whatever area. And capital V earlier was L into whatever area. No problem. No. Okay. So if you just compare this equation and this equation, you can see that P1 upon P is equal to P upon P plus V. So the pressure after the first stroke becomes this. Okay. So this is So pressure after the second stroke will become P1 into the same factor. Okay. Pressure after third stroke will become P2 into the same factor. So you can see this is a geometric progression and the pressure after the nth stroke will be so that is so understood. Na? So each stroke is a two-step process. You know, first you are expanding the gas from volume V to a total volume V plus small v. Okay. So the pressure changes from P to P1. Okay. And then as you're bringing it back, the volume is V, but the number of moles is decreasing now. So the pressure is changing to P1. I mean, the pressure is remaining P1 between the second and third picture. So that is the completion of one stroke from diagram one to two to three. That is one single stroke. So in one single stroke, the pressure changes by factor of whatever the initial pressure was into V upon V plus small v. So hope this is clear, Kevin. So this is an important type of question. Actually, ideally, the question should have explained what is each stroke more properly. Okay. Because you might wonder why I haven't considered the stroke as, you know, compressing it and then bringing it back to the original volume. And the, pist the valve opens when you compress it rather than, you know, the other way around. So that is another type of stroke. And in this, I have assumed this type of stroke and I've got this answer. So ideally, the question should give which type of stroke it is. Okay, let's come back to the module. So this was question 61. Next. Uh, Next, let's pick up question Which is 62 and 64. Fine. We'll be questions. So let's look at question 62 next. We have two containers of equal volume contain same gas at pressures P1 and P2 at temperatures T1 and T2. So initially their states we can write like that, that P1 V is 
is n1 r t1 and p2 v is n2 r t2 so this is initially and when you join them you have p into 2v is equal to n1 plus n2 into r into some common temperature t okay so i think just by comparing these two equations and eliminating n1 plus n2 you will be able to find this out so 2 pv is equal to n1 plus n2 rt okay so 2 pv divided by rt is equal to n1 plus n2 so now equate n1 plus n2 from the first two equations and substitute these here you will get the p by t ratio okay so as you can see you will get 2 pv divided by rt is equal to n1 which is p1v divided by rt1 plus n2 okay so you will get p by t is equal to 1 by 2 times p1 by t1 plus p2 by t2 okay and actually if you want to solve this fully you can also get the value of capital t by equating the internal energy okay so u1 plus u2 of course that is assuming we know the degrees of freedom so anyway so this is f1 by 2 p1 v 2 by 2 p2 v is the final internal energy which will be like this so u1 plus u2 is equal to u that will actually give us the final pressure provided we know degrees of freedom f1 and f2 it's the same gas so f1 and f2 are the same so if we substitute that value of p that we get from here over here we can find the final temperature also but anyway here you just asked to find p by 2e ratio so this is more like a kinetic theory of gases direct question So anyway, I hope this is clear. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Sixty fourth question. No. Yes, yeah, sorry, beta. What was the question? Okay. So, two monoatomic ideal gases at temperatures T one and T two are mixed. There is no loss of energy if the masses of the molecules are m one and m two, and number of molecules are n one and n two. The temperature of the So just equate the internal energy. Now U one plus U two should be equal to U. Okay. So n one times three by two k T one because n one is given as the number of molecules plus n two times Three by two k T two is equal to n one plus n two. 
टाइम्स थ्री बाय टू के टी सो टी शुड कम आउट टू बी एन वन टी वन प्लस एन टू टी टू डिवाइडेड बाय एन वन प्लस एन टू सो होप दिस क्वेश्चन इज आल्सो क्लियर मल्टीपल पीपल हैव आस्ट दिस क्वेश्चन ओके Okay, anything in this section now? I have not received questions uh, from you in this section. After this, I have received questions straight from exercise four, I think. Yeah. So, anything in the thermodynamics section, people? Okay. Okay. I'm coming to this then. Okay. So let's complete the thermodynamics section. Then we'll come to the heat transfer one. Okay, among among I'll check that out also. So let's discuss questions seventy one and seventy five first. Okay, so this is an inter interesting type of question. One gram of water at hundred degrees C, and this much pressure. converts to this much volume of steam at constant pressure okay latent heat of vaporization is this much the change in internal energy of water so q is equal to delta u plus w this concept will apply here now this w will be p delta v why because this is happening at constant pressure okay so that will be 10 to the power 5 pascal into the change in volume okay so the change in volume you can see water's density will assume is 1 gram per cc so 1 gram will be 1 cubic centimeter and it converts into this much volume of steam so delta v will be become 1840 cubic centimeters so 10 to the power Minus six. So this is work done by the system. That is by the expanding water against the atmospheric pressure. Okay. The change in internal energy. I'll explain what it is, but it's the unknown quantity. Whereas Q will be equal to m into L. So Q will be equal to one gram into two to five zero. Joule per gram. Okay, so you can see that two to five zero joules is equal to delta U plus. This will become how much? It one eighty four, right? Joules. So delta U we can calculate from this. Okay, now what is this delta U? This is the basically bond energy. Because when you are converting water to steam. in steam there is no intermolecular bond but in water there is intermolecular bonds so in 1 gram of water the total bond energy for the intermolecular bonds that is the change in internal energy okay so that is the concept of this question hope this is clear okay 
so this is not a process where an ideal gas is undergoing some thermodynamics right this is a process where you are converting liquid to gas so that interpretation of delta u becomes different okay so remember statement of first law of thermodynamics is universal it is just how we write the different quantities that depends on whether we are dealing with an ideal gas or not so hope this point is clear aman and samad both of you yes samad this is clear okay let's uh, do question 69 also and then we'll come back to 73 and 75 okay so let's look at question 69 so perfect gas is found to obey this principle during an adiabatic process okay so that means gamma is equal to 3 by 2 if such a process initial if such a process initially at a temperature t is compressed adiabatically to half its volume then its final temperature will be how much okay so pv to the power gamma is constant and gamma is 3 by 2 implies that now we have to find the relation between volume and temperature so pressure will be written as nrt by v so temperature into volume to the power gamma minus 1 is constant so substitute this value of gamma so temperature is inversely proportional to root v so t1 by t2 is square root of v2 by v1 let's use this okay all right let's come to question 74 then 73 and 74 sorry okay so question 73 let's understand w1 is the work done in compressing an ideal gas from initial to final isothermally okay so w1 is actually mod of nrt because is a compression okay so work done on the gas will become this for the compression from initial to final and w2 is the work done to compress it from same initial state to same final volume adiabatically so w2 is the work done on the gas for the adiabatic change so adiabatic change mein kya hota hai acha so we have to just estimate between the two so we can understand this graphically okay it is better to understand this graphically so if you draw a pressure versus volume okay and let us say this is our initial volume this is our final volume and this was our initial state okay and the first process we are going isothermally so we'll go with a isotherm is like this now in comparison to that what is an adiabat like an adiabat has lesser slope no so it has greater slope no so adiabat will be like this
okay so which one will have the larger area going from same initial to final state this one will have the larger area so w2 will be greater than w1 so that's one way to understand it another way to understand is that q plus w on the gas is equal to delta u okay so work done on the gas is heat removed actually this method will not help i mean it will become very lengthy so graphical method is the easiest way to understand this or otherwise you have to go with formula based method like i have written the formula for w1 you have to write the formula for w2 and compare but that will also become comparatively longer so it's much easier to do it this way is it clear kevin then the answer you just given c okay uh, what is c c is that w1 is greater than w2 acha before i come to that shikhar you have asked why the red line is not coinciding with the green line at the point e if it is at the same initial state no it is coinciding the point e is the initial state na so this is the initial state the final states are not coinciding they are having same volume but different pressures so this is a compression na okay so c should not be the answer it should be that w2 is greater than w1 because see what is happening is now in the adiabatic process we are doing work to compress the gas in such a way that is temperature is increasing so its internal energy is increasing plus some heat is withdrawn from it we is in the isothermal process we are doing work in such a way that we are only withdrawing heat from it its internal energy is not increasing in try proving this by formula also okay w2 in this case will be mod of work done in the adiabatic process so the adiabatic process what is the work done it is equal to minus of delta u so it will become the gas so the point should coincide at the upper point right no 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 so initially they are coinciding na huh? this is a compression remember it's yes, not an ex sir. expansion na no? the uh -huh. see the direction of the arrows you know is going from initial to final volume so the initial point is coinciding but the final point will have common volume but not common pressure you understand okay. you know? yes sir okay so if you go by formula based method it will be a bit lengthy because uh, work done in this adiabatic process now you will have to write it like this it is p final p final minus p initial v initial divided by gamma minus 1 okay So anyway, graph is the easiest method to prove this. So that was seventy third question. Now let's come to seventy fourth question. Shows the process in which pressure and volume both change. Okay. So what we can see about C? So you can see here that if you compare with isotherms, 
you can see that your temperature is increasing therefore delta u is positive okay and you can see that the volume is increasing so work done by the gas is positive okay so q which is delta u plus w so q if we write as n c delta t this is equal to n c v delta t plus some positive quantity so that means c is definitely greater than c v because the work done is positive so this should be the answer uh amok to answer your question about 73rd question the question clearly says the work done on the gas so we have to take the mod of the work done by the gas It says work done in compressing a gas and work done in compressing a gas again okay so it is the work done on the gas in this case Okay, so anyway, hope this seventy-fourth question is clear. Okay, next seventy-fifth, let's come to. so ideal gas changes from state a to b what is the work done by the gas in the process okay so you can see what type of process this is isochronic isochronic you can see that temperature is proportional to pressure and temperature is increasing from a to b okay so it is a isochronic heating okay so work done should be zero no okay fine so these questions are done now let's come to 84 and 89 also 81 okay okay 76 and 80 also kevin okay i'll come back to that so since i'm on this page let me complete this so 81st question now this type of question also you can always do by graph method is very easy a and b are initially kept at the same state a is expanded through an adiabatic process okay so this time we are talking about the comparison of expansion adiabatically and so this is our initial state and in one case in the process a we are going through adiabatic process to some final volume and in the second case we are going through an isothermal process so work done by the gas will be acha the final pressure they was na okay so you can see that the final pressure in the case of b will be greater than the pressure in the case of a okay so hope this is clear yes sir okay next let's come to uh, question number 74 uh, sorry 84 so polyatomic gas with 6 degrees of freedom 
does 25 joule of work with when it is expanded at constant pressure okay. so n cp delta t is equal to n cv delta t plus n r delta t this is q is equal to delta u plus w for isobaric process okay and here cv will be 3r and cp will be 4r so from that you can understand so nr delta t is 25 joules okay so so w sorry q will be equal to 4 times nr delta t and delta u will be equal to 3 times nr delta t okay so this should be the answer so this is also clear let's come back to 79th question sorry 76th and 80th okay so since we on this page let's complete 80th cyclic process is shown like this so they are all so these two are volume versus temperature so let's visualize volume versus temperature so ab is which type of process ab is isobaric expansion so if we take volume versus temperature isobaric means a linear function and volume is expanding so temperature is also increasing so ab should be like this okay then bc it's not given to us but suppose we assume it is isothermal so then isothermally the volume is increasing so it should be like this okay then cd is isochoric and uh, pressure is decreasing so temperature will also decrease so it should be like this okay so we'll have to assume that bc and da are isotherms this and this okay so in that case this is the correct graph okay whereas if we look at pressure versus temperature graph then ab is which type of process isobaric okay expansion okay then bc is isothermal so pressure is decreasing isothermally so bc should be like this okay then cd is isochoric so it should be it should be linear so it should be this one so these two graphs are correct okay so kevin hope this is also clear okay yeah shikhar to answer your question adiabatic process pv to the power gamma is constant so that means temperature into volume to the power gamma minus 1 is constant so temperature volume graph will also look like this that temperature is inversely proportional to 1 by v to the power gamma minus 1 and gamma is always greater than 1 because it's cp by cv so it will be like this okay. sir E yes. is inverse of PT, no? Pressure temperature. Ah, sorry. Sir, in sir in pressure versus temperature, we have taken AB as pressure constant, and in A it is temperature constant. AB. 
नहीं ए बी इज आईसो बारिक ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी दैट प्रेशर इज कॉन्स्टेंट आईसो बारिक सर इन ए ऑप्शन टेम्परेचर इज ए बी इज टेम्परेचर ओ आई हैव रिवर्स्ड ओके ओके माय मिस्टेक ओके आई हैव आई हैव टेकन द ग्राफ ऑफ पी वर्सेस टी द ग्राफ शुड बी ऑफ टी वर्सेस पी यस सो इफ इट्स टी वर्सेस पी देन ए बी विल लुक लाइक दिस टाइप ऑफ प्रोसेस right then bc will look like uh, temperature is constant and pressure is decreasing so it will look like this type of process so okay and then cd will be uh, okay cd will be the process where volume is constant so cd should be like this and da okay so this graph is not correct now okay so then neither of these two graphs is correct okay what is the answer given only b yes okay then that's yes, correct sir. but had this been a p versus v graph then this answer a also would have been correct okay okay so shikhar hope you understood how to uh, get the this thing also na the uh, pressure temperature graph okay again manipulate pb to the power gamma to get the pressure versus temperature relation okay you also have to look at uh, 76th question we we'll wind up with that one today so 76th question we have cyclic process where pressure versus temperature is like this so ab is what type of process ab is isochoric heating okay and then bc is isobaric compression okay and then ca is isothermal expansion b okay so ca is isothermal expansion okay then eb is isochoric heating yeah so this is correct this yeah. is correct and yeah so this one is correct yes sir okay so we will we'll conclude today's session here okay and uh, can keep sending me your doubts on whatsapp or okay. i'll keep giving you hints uh, till the test coming up on sunday okay complete heat and thermodynamics as much as possible okay so that's it for today people wish you all the best bye sir thank you sir thank you bye sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir okay people bye bye sir thank you sir.